That was literally all I was thinking after we washed her out. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Ella. And I'm Lauren. Not what? Oh, <laughs> you guys are the worst. <laughs> Give it to me like... <laughs> to our channel i'm ella and i'm lauren so what are we thinking about doing something like this okay show the camera show the camera that all right Hopefully i don't I know if it. we're gonna be able to get you that light but we can definitely try we're I gonna i think start definitely lightening just everything globally start with the platinum card and we'll add in that dimension with at the toner with toner at the bowl okay and it might take a few sessions but Today we can definitely get a lot of the heavy lifting done. Uh -huh. She did a CPR at home. So this is after pulling out a lot of her demi color. I don't know if you can see that kind of banding in this top like three inches or so. Yeah, if you pull it apart, you can kind of see it. Put Here, let's spin her. If you split her open, you can see just a little bit of her natural regrowth coming in right here. She's a, a natural bit, redhead. Keep a little that bit of mind. her band and then some old highlights on the lights down here. So you have to work through all of that and try to get her as light as possible. We're going to do a platinum card first. Then we're going to do a uh, color melt. And we're going to be using the braided balayage technique. So that'll be in this video as well. We're going to need to do at least one treatment, if not two. And then we're going to be doing a haircut at the end. I'm going to start her off with a little trim just because a lot of these ends are just crispy and just gone already. And <laughs> then we're going to start with her platinum card. So stick around to see the final product. We sectioned her into seven sections today. We don't normally do that, but a platinum card is a special circumstance and it's also a color correction. So we wanted to make sure that every single foil that we took was small enough to lift properly and small enough that we could fully saturate. So we did two in the back. We did a mohawk section because if you know me, you know I love me a good mohawk. And then we sectioned out her front baby hairs separately. I did that because I wanted to bleach those all the way to the scalp so that none of her baby hairs any of them remaining were this dark natural color that she started with so that was a little bit different for me but we tried it and it ended up actually working out very well you'll see that in the after but lauren starting on the side on the left i'm starting in the back on the right just to stay out of each other's way she's feathering all the way up about half an inch to a quarter of an inch away from the root I'm teasing in the back because Maya wanted more of a highlighted lived-in blonde look versus an all-over platinum blonde. We weren't going to get her platinum blonde today. We already explained that in the consultation. It's just really not practical, but we wanted to get her as light as possible and as close to her inspiration picture as we could. So we teased the entire back to leave a little bit of remaining darkness for that more natural effect. We lightened her using Wella Blondor Plex 10 volume in the very beginning. We worked our way up to 20 by the end of it, but if you know us, you know we love our Wella Blondor Plex. This stuff, the consistency is just chef's kiss. It lifts so evenly, and even for this service today, it lifted as much as we could have possibly asked for with 10 volume and a built-in bonder. Wella Blondor Plex is just my go-to every single time if you haven't tried it you really should and i am not sponsored in any way i just love their products
Applying a color correction with two people can get a little bit awkward, just bumping into each other's space, hair is going everywhere, a clips are in the way, it's just a mess. So the way that Lauren and I normally tackle these, because we're so in tune with each other, is I started in the front of the mohawk, she started in the back of the mohawk. And we just put our clips opposite of each other. I went to the left, she went to the right. Because of this, you're not getting a great shot of what we're doing right now, but you get the idea. Micro fine sections, no teasing in the mohawk. The mohawk had to be very precise and very thin because if there's anywhere you really need to focus on, it's the top of their head. They're always going to see that. And they're never going to be happy if they see a mistake. So we took our time, it took a while, but here's our process. Okay, so all of her foils are in. Let's do a little spin. You can see in the back the difference in the foiling patterns, but it's fine. It'll, it's all the same thing, but these are Lauren's <laughs> and these are mine. And we tease, you can see better in Lauren's, but we tease the root in the back for just a little bit of dimension, but all of the ends are in a foil. So they're all going to be light on the ends. We're just giving me a little more dimensional in the back. Now she's gonna have to suffer. Um, that application yeah. took like an hour and a half and then she's probably gonna sit for another at least 20, maybe 30, we'll see. And then we'll be back when we're washing her out. That was literally all I was thinking after we washed her out. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why I was so surprised because I've been doing her hair forever. This is my little sister, Maya, and we've done Demi Color numerous times on her hair but it did not lift as much as we wanted it to so we ended up improvising we ended up you know putting our forces together and we decided to do a wet balayage before we did anything further the only reason I'm doing this is because I know her hair can handle it so we did a very diluted mixture but we did 30 volume because we only left it on for 10 minutes we wanted to pop those ends I wasn't as concerned about the mid shafts because at this point I was thinking there's no way we're going to be able to do the braided balayage technique it's just not lifted enough for that and anything that would be left out for the blonde toner would still have too much warmth so that idea went out the fucking window when I saw this madness that we have on our hands. Um, 
but we handled it like professionals as we always do and we kept our heads on and this is us doing a wet balayage with 30 volume for 10 minutes we are still using a uh, wella blondor plex just because our girl didn't lift us as much as we thought does not mean we're going to bash her this was not a lightener problem or an application problem this was just the reality of a color correction and multiple layers of even demi-permanent color it will come back to haunt you so if you're thinking about going darker don't. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to say. And this was the moment that I wanted to jump up and down and scream thank you to the hair gods because that uh, wet balayage really made a difference. We also pre-toned it using Redken Shades EQ 8V and 8N. I do not recommend using straight AV if you are a beginner stylist because it can switch up so fast on you it's a wonderful product if you use it right in this situation we did mostly 8v and probably a third of an radkin shades eq and we let it sit for like five minutes and just to bring out some of that orange that was in that root and mid shaft area that we didn't carry the wet balayage to and it really worked wonders. As you can see, look how much less orange it is compared to the last clip. I mean, something, somebody was on our side this day for sure. And her hair was still in good shape. We were still able to continue on with the service. Here we are rooting her. We rooted her with the somewhat new Wella Shinefinity Zero Lift Glaze. This was one of my first times ever using that specific color line on a color correction. And when I say you, it amazed me. I am not kidding. I am normally a ride or die Redken Shades EQ fan. And I still love Redken Shades EQ. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I just feel like this Wella Shinefinity is so much more hydrating and it really truly does add more shine than I've found that the Redken Shades EQ does. This is not sponsored either. I do not get paid by Wella. I wish I did, but I do not. Right here is where I pulled a classic me moment and I took big weaves and I carried that root color all the way down for a couple lowlights. I did this because, like I said previously, she did not want to be all over light blonde. She wanted to still have those subtle hints of lowlights or just natural dimension in her hair. So that's what we did. And this also helped a lot with breaking out some of that orange... Um, band in her mid shaft excuse my back knee i did not realize we were getting a full back knee shot on me today jesus but anyway you'll see me throughout this i needed lauren's help so i didn't get it all messy so i recommend if you're gonna do this having somebody to hold the hair up and help you it just makes it so much easier so it doesn't transfer we're using that same root formula with the wellish shine finity the zero lift glaze with their processing solution which is i believe zero volume developer and then we let this sit for the full 20 minutes we used 712 in cool mushroom and 671 in frosted chestnut, I believe. I could be getting that wrong. The number system completely screws me up because I'm just so used to shades, honestly, and having the letters there. For her blonde toner, we used 981 and 898 in the Wella Shinefinity for the full 10 minutes.
and here she is. Look how beautiful and shiny. It felt good. We glossed her with 981 and 898 in the Wella Shinefinity Zero Lift Glaze once again. Turned out so stunning. I'm so happy with it. We'll do a second session at a later date and we'll make sure to film that too. If you guys have any other recommendations for videos, let us know. Bye.